and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on Paramount Plus that is staying in the living room with Grandma. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge, All Stars Season 4, Episode 3. And even though there is only one episode for this week, there's still a bunch of drama to talk about. So without further ado, let's jump in where last episode left off. And that was with Janelle pulling herself from the game right before going to the elimination because everything was a bit too toxic in the house for her. So at the elimination, neither Laurel nor Nicole wanted to go into the elimination. And with Tina being the last person standing in the arena, she became the default winner for the elimination and got to steal Avery's star. So coming back to the challenge house, Tina is excited. Tina is so happy and feeling so lucky as we're jamming out to Britney Spears. That song is going to be stuck in my head for the next seven years. No more, no less. I love the song choice and it, it just rattled something inside me. Something else that rattled something inside me was a very wholesome moment with Cam and Leroy. They were given a phone to check in on baby Kingston. It was a really touching moment. I love seeing Cam and Leroy as parents. And then joking about how Cam wants to keep on working and for Leroy to say that he's a stay-at-home husband and they were joking around and having this like really nice moment together. I really, really loved seeing it. In the next morning, uh, we hear Ayana's situation in the house is a little tense and stressful with everybody else. With everything that happened with Janelle, now some of the people in the house don't even say good morning to Ayana, apparently. And right now, Ayana's closest allies are Rachel and Tina, at least that's what it looks like from this episode and this edit. Ayana really felt motivated by Rachel because of her workout series. Her and Rachel kind of clicked and now are super duper tight. Another pair that is super duper tight is Tony and Nicole. However, at night, Tony goes and wakes up Nicole and tells her that he wants to talk to her in private. They sit down in a room where Steve has his CPAP machine on and Tony whispers to Nicole that he is pulling himself from the game. He has to go back home. There's a family emergency. He needs to be there with his family. Family comes first before the challenge. Lucky for us that in the confessional, Tony does say that this will not be the last time we see Tony on the challenge as rumors for season 40 have already come out that Tony is rumored to be on season 40. So it's really sad to see Tony leave very early on in this game, but happy that he decided to put his family first. Hopefully everything is good with his family and happy for us that we will see Tony later on on the challenge on the flagship show. Laurel does decide to go and check on Nicole because Nicole and Tony are from the same real world season. And coming into this game, Nicole felt very secure with both Tony and Jay. But now that Tony is gone, really Nicole can only lean on Jay as her like number one. But does Tony leaving and Laurel kind of opening up this bridge and this support for Nicole kind of soften both of their hearts to maybe want to work with each other? And I can see it happening, but we get none of that in this episode. Instead, the next day, everybody dons their challenge gear, heads down to meet up with TJ for this week's daily challenge. But before we get any instructions for the daily challenge, TJ says that with Tony leaving, he had to call up an all-star. Now we know it's Cyrus because he was in the initial cast reveal. I will say the one thing that I found really weird is that TJ described Cyrus as a two-time finalist. When realistically, he could have just said one-time challenge champion Cyrus because Cyrus won the challenge back in season four. But Cyrus joins the group to make it an even 11 men and 11 women for this week's paired daily challenge called Domino. Very shocking name, I will say. But in this daily challenge, everybody will be paired up, one man to one woman, and they will be working to try to place 10 dominoes in sequence of each other, connecting the same number to each other, all the way down to a domino in the middle of the ring. The two pairs that can connect 10 of their dominoes correctly first will win into power and win into safety. Then there's a middle group, and then the five slowest pairs will be in danger of being voted into the elimination this week. And this is an important daily challenge because this is a double elimination week. One man and one woman will be eliminated this 
episode and stars will be trading hands. Something else well done about this challenge is that every team has two dominoes that just won't work. It won't fit the sequence. It'll completely mess a team up and then they will basically have to redo everything. Endurance and strategy is very key to winning this daily challenge, more so strategy than anything else, because you can take your time and still get in at least the middle group as long as your strategy is solid. And we'll just see, some of these teams had no strategy whatsoever, like Brad and Rachel. They have muscles on top of muscles, Rachel says. However, they just don't plan ahead. One team that surprised me and really planned ahead was Jay and Nicole. They started pushing out all of their dominoes right away so that way they could see which dominoes could go where and connecting them even starting from the middle domino and going out, which is exactly what I would do. If the challenge said that you don't have to start from the very farthest part and go into the middle, and you could start wherever you wanted, I would start and work my way backwards from the middle all the way out. To me, that's the safest way of not screwing up. Some other teams that did fantastically well, of course, was Adam and Avery. Adam was very complimentary to Avery, calling her Wonder Woman, saying that she will never quit. When it came down to it, Avery and Adam did a fantastic job. They worked well together, they had communication, they had a plan, they had strategy, they had urgency, and they were able to come out on top winning. Two people that I think have been very impressive in the beginning part of this season. In second place was Kara and Ace, Third place was Nicole and Jay. Fourth place was Laurel and Brandon. Fifth place was Jasmine and Steve. And the sixth and final pair was Cam and Ryan. Uh, this was tough because you have Ayana and Cyrus. Cyrus being in the losers group and up for possibly going into the elimination is just an easy vote. I mean, Rachel and Brad really shocked me, as well as Leroy. I know he was paired up with Flora, and Flora has shown that she doesn't have the most endurance, but still, Leroy is now in the loser group again is very shocking. Tina and Kifla are both in the loser group as well, and Veronica and Derek. Now there's a lot of people on the line of possibly being sent into the elimination. The middle group has a lot of names to consider. However, one person who finds themselves in the loser's group had a lot to say to Cyrus. Now Cyrus just came into the game, he's asking questions, wants to know where people's heads are at, where the strategy is, where the friendships are, alliances, and Ayana is saying too much too loudly because Brandon and Flora both overhear Ayana giving some info to Cyrus, who was her partner during that daily challenge, saying that there's people in the game that want to target Leroy and Cam because they come as a pair. Now, Brandon overhears this, but takes it as Ayana is trying to push for people to vote Leroy into the elimination to break up Cam and Leroy. From what was shown on the bottom of the screen with the subtitles, it doesn't sound like Ayana ever says, I want to break up Cam and Leroy. That other people, that people, just in general, people in the house would want to target both of them to then split them up. It gets confusing with the wording, especially after your adrenaline has been pumping, everybody's talking and walking around, and you hear somebody saying a couple of names and mix that with Ayana already not being a house favorite among her castmates. I mean, it is a perfect storm. We get to the bar scene and everybody's having a good time dancing. And Cam is talking with Kara and Laurel and Rachel and really just trying to get their thought process about what Ayana said or what Brandon had told Cam about what Ayana said about splitting up and targeting Leroy and sending him into the elimination. Laurel is surprised about hearing this news and even goes and talks to Ayana. All Ayana says is that she doesn't wanna go up against Rachel. Now, everybody's coming back to the challenge house after having a few drinks, it's pretty late, but Cam just wants to ask her about what she said at the daily challenge, that she heard from multiple sources that Ayana wants to target Cam and Leroy with this vote. Ayana denies, 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 and she even swears on her children. Now, Cam does push back and say, so all the people that told me what you said, they're lying. And this sends Ayana kind of through the roof. 
Ayana didn't want to talk about this tonight. She was already tired. She didn't want to deal with this. So add the levels of stress and Ayana kind of just goes off on the entire house. Now it is a witch hunt to see who told Cam these rumors of her wanting to target her and Leroy. She's going up to every single person asking, did I say this? Did you say I said this? What did I say? Did I say this? Nobody's stepping up. Brandon, Brandon even says, we haven't talked to each other in the past three days. Not only is she getting stress from inside the house and inside the game, she's part of the losers group. Now she's being questioned on what she said. And this is where I think I felt Ayana crossed the line. Because I can, the only thing I can think of in this moment when Ayana is talking to the camera saying that, the house is trying to frame her, but in the middle of her saying that the house wants to frame her and send her into the elimination, she then gets personal and says that Jasmine knows that she's calling me at one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, crying and telling me all about her stuff when she's going through her stuff, which I'm assuming is the divorce. It's like, I can only assume that Ayana feels that Jasmine was the one to throw her under the bus to Cam and Leroy, because that just felt like in a personal attack that felt like it came out of nowhere, at least with the edit of why like she singled out Jasmine. Like it sounded from Jasmine's confessional earlier on in the episode that she and Ayana had this like cool friendship outside of the house. Ayana would call to check in on her and Jasmine would like talk and sometimes vent to her about all the stuff that she was going through. But in this moment, it seemed like Ayana was using it against her. Just like a real, Real mess. The next day, we get a few pivotal conversations before we get to the nominations. You have a conversation between Cam and Leroy where Cam is feeling stressed. She has to pump a ton inside the house. She says she's pumping every like two to three hours and during the middle of the night as well. And if her stress levels are too high and it hinders with her being able to produce milk for Kingston, she said that that was her deal breaker. So she's really just trying to like navigate this game but also do her motherly duties as well. And Leroy even asked like, okay, I know that we had the thing with Ayana last night. Like, do you want to sit down and try to talk to her again? And Cam just says, L let's not bother. We see Rachel talk to Kara about the star holders looking out for each other. That if Kara were to not vote for Rachel to be sent in against Ayana, that she would take that as a sign of good faith, want to work with Kara, and not steal her star if she were to go down there and win against Ayana and then come back where then she would have to steal a star. Kara says, we star holders should look out for one another. And then we go to the nomination ceremony. They get Kifla and Cyrus out of the way early. Everybody just agrees unanimously that they will be the guy's vote. But when it comes down to the women's side, Brandon votes first. Cam pleads for people to have her back and say both Ayana and Rachel's name and send them two into the elimination against one another. Starts with Brandon, goes all the way around. It's pretty much locked in by the time we get Kara's vote that it's going to be Ayana and Rachel. But the way this is set up, it seems like Kara votes for Flora and Ayana, and Cam like gets super mad at her, even though if the edit was true to life and that Kara voted last, her vote would not matter. To me, it just doesn't make sense to get super upset if Kara was the last one and her Flora vote wouldn't have mattered regardless. Cam is disappointed in Kara for not voting with her, but at the end of the day, Cam gets what she wants in that Ayana and Rachel are voted into the elimination against one another. So with the four nominees decided, they don their challenge gear and meet up with TJ in the arena for this week's elimination called Down the Tube. There will be this rotating giant metal tube that the players will be stationed in. When TJ blows the horn, they have to run and try to push the ball out the opponent's end of the tube. Best two out of three wins. And the first duo up is Kifla and Cyrus. And Kifla absolutely dominates. Of course, this is more of a weight-based challenge as the bigger, heavier, more muscular person more than likely will have an advantage in this elimination, which we saw with Kifla. Kifla wins round one in record timing. It took like, what, 10 to 15 seconds he pushed Cyrus and the ball out. And then in round two, they really tried to elongate this elimination by being like, wow, Cyrus is holding on. However, when you look at where 
Cyrus is situated, Kefla has pushed him all the way to the edge of the tube. He has no leverage. Even if Kefla was getting tired, Cyrus has no foot room, no way to get momentum on his side to then push the ball over. I was like, Kefla wins. Let's get through this. Kefla does win this two rounds to nothing. And the best part of this elimination is his celebration because Kefla walks out of the tube, is holding the back of his leg. A lot of people are like, whoa, is it a cramp? People are concerned. I'm concerned. And then Kefla, while he's on the ground, starts doing like twerking motions. It was incredible. All right, let's move on to Rachel versus Ayana. Now, Ayana is the bigger competitor. So going into this, I felt Rachel could be at a disadvantage not having as much weight on Ayana, but given the right technique and if Ayana kind of gasses out at some point, I felt Rachel could really take this one. And she does. She gets the first round. Rachel had to put in some strategy, get low, and just continue just pushing for every inch. And she was able to push the ball out. And then she got to round two where she had a little bit more momentum, a little bit more push. I thought Ayana just maybe gas out a little too much in round one. Rachel was just too much to overcome and Rachel wins. Now, there was a certain point where I felt Rachel was holding onto her shoulder, but when she looked up at the whole house, she's like, give me all the stars. But in this episode, we say goodbye to Cyrus and Ayana, and then we move on to the stealing of the stars. Kefla is up first. He gets to choose one person start to steal between Steve and Brad. And Kefla decides to steal Brad's star. And then Rachel steps up and there's a point where she even asks TJ if she has to steal star or can she defer and not steal anything from anybody. But TJ says she has to take one. She can take either Kara or Tina's or Steve's. I understand why she takes Tina's star and then gives it to Veronica. They probably talked about it before even coming to the elimination that if she were to ask TJ if she had to steal star and he said yes, that this would be the best for all three of their gameplays and what will make the smallest target on their backs moving forward and that is just transferring a star from Tina to Veronica. Smart, strategic move to not make any enemies but also a very boring move to the audience because we want to see some juicy stuff. And we even hear Cam say that Rachel was playing a scared game because there is a very strong competitor in Kara. Would you want to face against Kara in the final? No, realistically, I'm sure Rachel wouldn't. I mean, she already doesn't want to because she wants stars for Veronica and Tina. She would rather run against Veronica and Tina in the final. So at some point, you're gonna have to cross that line and barrier and steal Kara's star and give it to the Mean Girls or a Mean Girl is gonna have to take Kara's star. So not doing it now, I can see is smart because there's still a lot of game to be played, but the current star holders is Adam, Kiefla, Steve, Kara, Rachel, and Veronica. This episode was Great, already three episodes in and I'm loving this season. It's so fantastic, I love it so much. But what do you think about this season so far? Let me know down in the comment section below. What'd you think about this episode? What'd you think about the daily challenge? What'd you think about Tony having to pull himself from the game? What'd you think about the fight that was happening between Ayana, Cam, and Jasmine? As well as, do you think it was a right move to vote in Kefla, Cyrus, Ayana, and Rachel? into this week's elimination? And do you think it was the right move for both Kefla and Rachel to take the stars from Brad and Tina and keep one and give it to Veronica? Do you think that that was a smart move by Rachel to just transfer the stars from Tina to Veronica? Or do you think that was a scared move? Let me know anything and everything you felt about this episode down in the comment section below. I wanna hear what you have to say as well as I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more All Stars 4 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.